We've been talking about the ups and downs of pregnancy and the different options women are taking to get pregnant. My next guest is a TLC reality star on Lauren and Alexi after the 90 days, which highlights her rough road through her second pregnancy. Take a look. This season on Lauren and Alexi after the 90 days. Do you think that this baby is gonna come like really soon? He's coming sooner than what you think. Oh God. I'm really scared of having this baby early because the sooner the baby comes, the longer he's gonna have to be in the NICU. I mean, now you have commitment. Yeah, I know. It's what it is. We're done. Wow. Yeah. Lauren's parents are always giving me a hard time. And sometimes I think some space would be a good thing. Why are you crying? Having kids can make or break a couple. It's really stressful. I literally asked you to do one thing. I want to hear that one more time. Alex doesn't feel the effects of pregnancy, and I've been pregnant for two years straight. If your baby is coming premature. Oh my gosh. Yes, your baby will be four weeks at the hospital. The thought of baby Bowden being in the NICU, I'm not ready for that. That's not how it's supposed to go. Something is running down my leg, and I don't know what it is. I think her water just broke. Are you OK? And joining us now is 90 Day Fiance star Lauren Brovarnik and my good friend, colleague, OBGYN, Dr. Nita Landry. Welcome, ladies. Hi. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. All right, first and foremost, Lauren, congrats on the new spinoff. Thank you. What can viewers expect to see during your second pregnancy journey? I say I'm hormotional because I have more hormones and more emotions than I've ever had before. <laughs> well, and Dr. Nita, that's just, that's part of the deal, right? It is. It's a part of it. You got to love those hormones. I know at times it can be a little rough. Right. My husband doesn't love them. <laughs> okay. And Lauren, I mean, your first time around, you had a high risk pregnancy. So uh, that comes into play in a big way, doesn't it? It does. I had really bad preeclampsia with Shy, our first one. And the fact that I got pregnant so soon again is another thing because my body never cycled through the whole postpartum transition with your hormones and your emotions and all of that. So this was, I was a high risk pregnancy this time around. We understand that you don't have a functioning cervix. Is that correct? It's true. I don't have a cervix. I had a lot of like female history you know, issues, if you will. Um, I've had leap procedures, cone biopsies, and my cervix never grew back. And so before we decided to get pregnant, my OB at the time highly recommended having a transabdominal cerclage put in. It's basically a ring around the top of the cervix or what he was describing to us. It's to prevent a baby from falling through. So we did it as an insurance policy. And I'm glad we did because had we not, both of my babies would have fallen through at like six, seven months. Gotcha. So Dr. Dr. Nito, explain to us um, cervical cerclage and the other ramifications of going through that. Yeah, it's a small, strong stitch that's placed high on the cervix, like she mentioned. And it's basically to help prevent the premature delivery of a baby when someone has a weaker cervix. Gotcha. So, Lauren, the one issue with, with your cervix and the cervical cerclage, but you also um, got sick with your pregnancy. Tell us about that. So, we get tested right before going in and it comes back that I have RSV, which is a respiratory virus that's very deadly to babies. So that aside from him being very early, they wouldn't even show us him after they took him out. They literally lifted him up, showed us his backside, flipped him, moved him and took him to get cleaned and everything. And Alex wasn't even allowed to go near him, nothing because we were waiting on his test results still. 